Hi, my name is Philip Hunt, and I'm the Vice Chancellor here at Central Africa Baptist University. And I'm Sandala Mwanje, the Deputy Vice Chancellor here at CABU. And we are happy that you've joined us again for this weekly program. You know, Pastor Sandy, we have heard a lot of discussion and a lot of interaction with people uh, asking the question, why have not our prophets uh -huh. warned us adequately of this whole COVID-19 pandemic that we see spreading around the globe? Okay. Prophets. Yes, uh, and I, okay. think that's, I think that's why there's yeah. so much discussion about it, is yeah. because people are stepping back to say, what's going on yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why have we not been warned mm -hmm. if, in fact, God is speaking to certain people in these yeah. ways? And so mm -hmm. I think with the amount of questions that we've been asked, this mm -hmm. would be a good uh, discussion for us to have yeah. today. Yeah, so actually two things have uh, happened. Uh, concerning the prophets and COVID-19. So maybe we should title this clip Prophecy and COVID-19. I what think do you so. Think? Prophecy okay. and COVID-19. Yes. So two things have happened. Uh, number one, there's a section of them that are just quiet. Yes. They haven't said anything. The largest section. Exactly. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's because they have been taken by surprise. Sure after telling the world, after telling us that this is going to be a great year, this is going to be a year of favor, this is going to be a year of success, this is going to be a year of what not. And then this is only March right. in 2020, and the entire world is, is, is global, on quarantine. Global pandemic. Yes, global pandemic. Uh, several nations are on lockdown. Our authorities are observing, you know, the spread of the virus in, in Zambia. We may yes. be headed for a lockdown. We don't know. Right. But there's, there's clearly a difference in the prophecy that they received from the Lord. Yeah, and I've got something on that here in just a minute. Okay. Yeah. And what is happening. So that's why from a good number of them, a good section, there it's is quiet. just, it's just quiet. And the others? And then the others have made attempts. Okay, so today I was on uh, Facebook early in the morning. Uh, supposedly, there was a prophecy from T.B. Joshua. And before this, we just viewed a clip from uh, T.B. Joshua's church where he was saying that this thing is going to end where it started from today. March 27th. March 27th. Yeah, so this was a couple of weeks ago that he made this prophecy, that the Lord had showed him this. Yeah. And yet... Yeah around the world, the pandemic on March 27th is actually growing worse. Did you see in Spain now, yeah. the number yesterday of deaths just shot up dramatically once again. It's, a, it's really a terrible situation. So there you have it. A prophet told us that COVID-19 is going to end today. Today, yeah. Well, let me, let me just also share with you, um, I was sharing this with my mm -hmm. church on, on uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, in January 2020, uh, American pastor and apostle by the name of Sid Roth, a famous mm -hmm. chap mm -hmm. that side, yeah. uh, hosts a show called It's Supernatural. And he asked in January 20 of the leaders of the prophetic movement in the United States mm. to share by video what God had given them as a prophetic message for this year. Now, this is January. We're in March. Yeah, yeah. Let me share some of those with you, okay? Please, please, please. So Hank Kinneman of One Voice Ministries, and this is just a bit of what he said. There is going to be public meetings full of people. Well, in Zambia now, churches can't even meet, right, around the world. Yeah. James Gall yeah. from God Encounters Media Ministries prophesied that stadiums will be filled beginning in 2020 and beyond. Hakeem Collins of Hakeem Collins Ministry prophesied that this would be the greatest year of wealth transfer. You know, you know when these guys talk about wealth transfer, you know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. That, that God is going to take the yeah. wealth from the wicked people mm -hmm. and transfer it to Christians. Yeah. So he says the year of greatest wealth transfer and greatest stadium crusades in history. Keenan Bridges of Keenan Bridges Ministry prophesied 
This is a year of prophetic prosperity. So into the prophetic ministry and you will see a great transfer of the greatest transfer of wealth in history. Kenneth Copeland, I think we've heard of this guy. Yeah, he's famous in Zambia. He's famous yeah. here. He says this will be a year of great change, wonderful change of God's blessings on the earth, many miraculous healings. And then you referred to T.B. Joshua, who just a couple of weeks ago prophesied that coronavirus would be over on March 27th. Yet just this week, Scone Ministry closed their church. They can't even come to the place of healing uh -huh. to worship God. That's actually closed. Mm -hmm. Uh, another chap by the name of Sean Bolt. So what was interesting about this was this was picked up by the international media. Okay. And... Uh, he prophesied, the Lord showed me the end of coronavirus. The tide is turning and it will not be the pandemic that people fear. Now, I don't know who this chap is, but it was picked up by international news media. Mm. Uh, this was just one month ago. Well, clearly none of these prophets got it right. Mm. And as they went to God to get their message for, 20, for 2020, God somehow not one time told them about the pandemic that we were going to face just a couple of months or a month, a month later. And I think people are asking, and it's a fair question, mm. why not? If really you have this connection with God, and God just speaks to you when you're in your bathtub, in your shower, when you're in the bed, like Kenneth Copeland was saying, he was in his bed and God, the voice of God came to him, if the voice of God is really coming to these guys, why didn't the voice of God warn us all about COVID what, we, what we're facing? COVID-19. Yes. And, and, and just there, I think that's where the big deal is. Okay, so let me just chip in there. Okay, Please. and why are we making a big deal out of this topic, out of this subject? Well, it's because, you see, when you come to people and say you have a word from the Lord. And specifically when you use the word prophecy and when you call yourself a prophet, yeah. you are really representing God before the people. And you are telling people, thus saith the Lord. Yes, yes. You, you are, are claiming yes. that God himself yes. revealed yes. this truth to yes. you. Yes. So, so, so this is critical because if what you say doesn't come to pass, in fact, if the opposite comes to pass, we have an issue not with you, but with God himself. The integrity of, of God's character is at stake. Yes. And, and that's the reason we are having this, this uh, podcast. This, this is the reason we are making a big deal out of it. Yeah. And this is the reason we have to call out these guys. Yeah. You, you know, know you, you, we were talking earlier um, in the Old Testament. Now, thankfully, yeah. we live in the age of grace. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so thankful we don't live under the Old Testament. But in that era of time, mm. if someone stood up and said, thus saith the Lord, I have a message from God. God spoke to me and told me to tell you X, Y, Z. And it was false. It didn't come to pass. The people were never to believe that prophet. They would know the prophet didn't come from God because- That's number one. That's number one. Number two, there was actually the death penalty. Uh -huh. If you claim to the people publicly that God told you something and you proclaimed it as, as an authority on behalf of God and it was false, they were to take you out and stone you to death. Now, I'm not suggesting <laughs> that that ought to be today. You're I'm just, just saying, implying. No, what I'm saying <laughs> no, is I'm that if this, <laughs> yeah. if this era that we're in, if these chaps were in that yes, era, yes. I think people would be a lot more careful exactly. about these supposed words from exactly. God. So, so in this era, what the Bible calls it is deception, clearly. Yes. Okay. So clearly this is not from the Lord. Right. Okay. The, the, this is from Satan. Yes. Okay. This is from Satan and the aim is to deceive people. Yes. They, they said in the last time, yeah. people will be yeah. deceiving and being deceived. Exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. So, so let's talk a bit then, uh, Pastor Sandy, about prophecy, biblical prophecy. Mm. So when we come to this idea of prophecy in the New Testament, because I think a lot of people are saying, well, well, what are we supposed to do with this? Mm. Mm. Um, we can't comprehensively deal with the subject in this uh, uh, video, yeah. but we can say this. In Scripture, there's a twofold nature to the gift of prophecy. We find mm. the gift included foretelling, yeah. in other words, prophesying of things that were yet to come. Mm. We see that throughout the Old Testament mm. and even some of the prophets in the New Testament doing yeah. similar things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this foretelling was through direct revelation from God. And then we also see the gift of prophecy as forth telling mm. through the Holy Spirit empowered proclamation of the revelation of scripture. In other words, when I pick up scripture or you pick up the scriptures and we read a text, we can say to the people, thus saith the Lord, mm. look mm. at yeah. this text. Yeah. Yeah. That is chapter and verse, uh, chapter and verse the gift of uh, prophecy. Biblical prophets in the New Testament time did speak from an immediate revelation relating to future events or relating to the mind of the spirit in 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 general um, but they were they were guided in their in their gift and I just want to read uh, a couple of verses from 1 Corinthians 14 Paul was giving instructions for the biblical use of this gift of prophecy uh, in the church and he says uh, in verse 26 of chapter 14 uh, whether you, when you come together you have a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation, let all things be done for the edification, for the building up of the church. You know, so many of these supposed prophecies mm. have nothing to do with building people up. Exactly. They, they, don't, they don't nurture us, they don't nourish us. It's just more or less feel-good nonsense. You know, God has shown me that a wonderful thing is going to happen in your life. How am I built up by that? What truth have I received that can help edify me and give me instruction in godly living? It, it's, it just doesn't meet the criteria of biblical prophecy. I have a word for what they do. Allow me just to chip in. Don't sure, lose your please. thoughts. Okay? Yeah, sure. These guys actually cash in. They, they, they cash in. The reason they are telling you you're going to have a wonderful life, you're going to have... The reason they are making you feel good they want your money. They want you to give more. Mm -hmm. they, they want you to sow a seed, as they call yes, it. Right. Okay? And, and, and then you see some of these guys, uh, I would like to talk about our prophets here in Africa. You know, so they cash in on things like tragedies that happen in Africa. So they observe there's a sick president somewhere, there are some signs showing, you know, and so they prophesy the death of a president, you know, to who followers to themselves. Yeah. But then that's just about you know, the, the, the paycheck. People bring in more money. Yeah. This COVID thing, they are doing the same thing. They want to cash in. Mm -hmm. Quite mm -hmm. immoral if you ask yes. me. Yes, yes. Sorry, hope you haven't Yes, no, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so, so again, some guidelines for the biblical use of this prophecy. Verse 29, let two or three prophets speak in a church service and let other prophets weigh what is said in light of revealed prophecy of the Word of God. Um, if a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that, again, look at the purpose of prophecy. Yeah. So that all may learn and all may be encouraged. So it's not these nonsense prophecies. It's actually opening and explaining mm. the prophetic Word of God in a way that people learn the Scriptures mm -hmm. and can apply the truth to their everyday life. Um, it says the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets for God is not the author of confusion but of peace. Now here, here's another thing that is right in the text mm. so, so mm. let's just throw this out there mm. and maybe this is a subject on its own. Yeah. As in all the churches of the saints the women should keep silent in the church for they are not permitted to speak as a prophet but should be in submission as the law also says. Then he, he also realizes 
the Corinthians are not going to be happy with what mm. he's saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're acting in other ways. They're, they're, they're acting in the way that their culture has taught them. So he says this, verse 36. Was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only ones it has reached? Now listen to verse 37. If anyone among you thinks that he's a prophet or spiritual, that person should acknowledge that the things I'm writing to you are the command of the Lord. In other words, these guidelines for the use that we didn't even talk about tongues. Yeah, yeah. It's also covered here. Yeah, yeah. That these guidelines for the use of tongues and prophecy are actually commandments of the Lord. Now listen to verse 38. If the people exercising these gifts, verse 38, does not recognize that this is a command of the Lord, then they should not be recognized as prophets. Verse 38 says it right here. So my brothers, here's the summary, earnestly desire to prophesy, do not forbid to speak in tongues, but all things should be done decently mm -hmm. and in order. In other words, he's saying, look, if you really are a prophet, if you really are spiritual, you will acknowledge that what Paul is teaching about how this gift operates is actually the commandment of the Lord, not the suggestion of God but the commandment of the Lord. And if you folks out there are in a church or you're listening to people on, on TV and radio that do not recognize that that is the command of the Lord governing this gift and how it operates, then you should not listen to them. They are not spiritual. They are not actually God's prophet mm. because they're denying the reality of God's commandment. Of God's commandment. And I think if people would just have the spiritual discernment mm. to put that test to those that they're listening to, it would actually put a lot of these guys out of business in just a one week's time. I think we should throw in something to the followers as well, you know, those of you that follow these prophets. You know, if you are constantly following someone who has demonstrated that he is not from the Lord, someone who has said, God said, and that thing did not come to pass. Mm -hmm. Clearly he lied. If you are following that person, then both you and that prophet are following after the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that is not God. Yeah. I think maybe mm -hmm. to wrap this one up, we should just comment. Uh, there's another verse of scripture that I'd like us to share mm -hmm. um, because God does claim in his word that his revelation is completed for now. When mm -hmm. scripture was yeah. completed, yeah. God is no longer speaking new words of revelation mm -hmm. that are authoritative in the, in the terms of, of, of the authority of scripture. And there are a number of scriptures that show us this, but probably one of the most powerful ones is found in, 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 in Jude, mm. the second to last book mm. in our New Testament. Verse three, Jude says, Beloved, I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation. However, I found it necessary to write appealing to you, now listen to this, to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered, past tense, to the saints. So notice the faith, the one and only faith. There is no other. It literally means, that word faith, literally means the sum total of what Christians, true Christians believe. Mm. Notice he says, it was once and for all. This refers to something that was done and it was done for all time with lasting results. It would never be repeated. In other words, Scripture is claiming that God's revelation was finally delivered once and for all to his people. Mm. And then it says the word delivered indicates an act that was completed in the past with no continuing element. It was like this is something that was done full stop. It's not continuing. Now listen to verse 4. Why is this so important? Because just like in Jude's day, we have this problem. Mm. Because certain people have crept in unnoticed into the church who long ago were des designated for this condemnation. 
ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality, fleshly desires, longing for health, longing for wealth, longing for the miraculous, right? Sensual, fleshly yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. They long for these things. And in so doing, they actually deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. I think this is a powerful warning. That's instructive. And instructive That's for us instructive. in this day. Yeah. Can I throw in one? Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, beginning. Long ago, at many times... And in many ways, he used visions, yes. the burning bush in the case of Moses. Absolutely. Many ways. Dreams. Dreams, yeah. uh, demonstrations in the case of Jeremiah. Many ways. Spoke to our fathers. Observe the past tense. Yeah. This is how he spoke to our fathers. By, by the, the prophets. By the prophets, right. Then the contrast in verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us. He's talking about the finality of revelation yes. in and through Jesus Christ. His son. His son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Mm -hmm. And the things that Jesus did have been recorded to us in the Bible, in the Gospels. Yes. The things Jesus would have loved his church to have were written to us by the apostles. Mm -hmm. And even and commanded, so, go and teach them to obey all things that Christ commanded. Exactly. So what more are we looking for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been clearly told you've been given everything. That pertains for life, life and, and godliness. godliness. Yes, yes. So anyone who's going to come to you outside of the scriptures is not coming in the name of yes. the Lord. Yes. He is saying in God's name what God is not saying. Yes. So I think that the reason to summarize that we have not heard any of these prophets, whether they are in Zambia or in the African continent as a whole, or uh, those even from the America, mm. Mm. the reason we have heard none of these prophets give a definitive prophecy warning the world about this pandemic is because they are morally and spiritually bankrupt. They do not have the authority of God. They are, they are hearing something. I don't know what they're hearing. Yeah. But they are not hearing from God in the way that these prophets heard from God. Yeah. And so, friends, we hope that you will um, consider. You know, it takes a lot of energy and effort mm. to rightly divide the prophecy that God has given to us. Mm. How much simpler just to run to someone who can give us a quick word that makes us feel good. Yeah. But we have been called as God's people to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Pastor Amen. Sandy, would you just Amen. pray for those who are yes. watching this, yes. that they would even test and see if the things mm -hmm. that we've mm -hmm. shared um, are actually the things yeah. that God has said. And just a challenge before I pray. If you are in a church, somebody told you this is going to be a great year, a year of prosperity, for starters, challenge them on that. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you may open the eyes of, of people that have been deceived. And for these deceivers, that you may speak to them. Peradventure, they may find grace and mercy that they may come to repentance. We pray for them, that, that they, they, they may be convicted of, of their sin, this great sin of deceiving masses, that they may be convicted of this sin, that they may be convicted of their blasphemy, speaking, invoking your name, saying things that you haven't said, that you may convict them of, of that. And we pray for the situation going on, the COVID-19, that you, our Father, may have mercy upon the world, mm. but that your purposes might be accomplished through this pandemic. We thank you for the sake of Christ. Amen. Amen.